for this motion, I've taken the arguments of counsel, and last night I reviewed all of the evidence that has been submitted in this matter. So as to the second and third alleged def defamatory statements, um, at the motion to strike at this juncture, I view the evidence in light most favorable to the plaintiff and reasonable inferences from the evidence to the plaintiff. And if there is a scintilla of evidence that a reasonable juror could weigh, then the matter survives a motion to strike. In this matter, there is evidence in the case that a jury could weigh that the statements were made by the defendant, that the statements were about the plaintiff, that the statement was published, that the statement is false, and the defendant made the statement knowing it to be false, or the defendant made it so recklessly as to amount to a willful disregard for the truth. The weight of that evidence is up to the fact finder. So the motion to strike is denied as to statement two and three. Uh, the motion to strike as to statement one, I'm going to take under advisement because um, if it's not a stipulation, I'm not sure what it is, but there seems to be an agreement that the tweet of Ms. Heard is part of the plaintiff's evidence, which is not in evidence at this point. So I can't rule on that statement whether or not it is just a tweet or if it's some sort of republication or something. I don't know because I haven't seen it yet. So as to the motion to strike on, on statement one, I'm going to take an advisement because ruling on it now, it would be premature because I just don't have that evidence in the case. Okay? Thank you very much, Your Honor. All right.